Welcome to ENN. Ray Rowe. On Tiwi. It's brought to you tonight by Security Dodge. Mm. Go see Michelle Scalisian. Come get some! Yeah! I'd like to start off tonight's ENN by saying good evening to Michael and myself. I haven't texted him in some time. Well, don't. H hasn't written me back, by the way. There you go. Yeah. But oh, you know, do you think Michael got to him and said, don't respond to Peter? <sighs> it's possible. I didn't. I, you know what, though, Don? Terrific idea. <laughs> and, good evening, <laughs> and good evening to Michael. I'm no Hank. And to Don. I can't fake laugh. If I find it funny, I'll laugh. You've seen me. I'll turn red like a goal was scored. Oh, I've seen you fake laugh, though. Sure. He's have. a phony. Yeah, Michael. <laughs> well, no, not in that. It's not the same. We'll get to that. Good evening to Omar and Michael. That game was closed because of Alex Peltzra. What's Eric. the reason that Eric. it's first? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> okay. If you, who is that, Omar? Alex Peltzra. If you insist on names being said correctly. It, who is Eric Spelsbra? This is the question. And also, Omar, what else? The disconception about uh, Alex Spelsbra. <laughs> now, is that my mic's off? I yeah, have my I think, mic. I, so, so, that's, so my mic was off, to Michael, because I was taking a drink of my Starbucks and I don't want the ice to bother you. Right? Don't bother me? How about our listeners? Forget about me. <laughs> I, do they really care? I know it's you who's going to go, what the hell was that? First of all, I wouldn't so, curse on the air. Curse. I, 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 sometimes, a lot of sometimes curse. I just want to choke you out, man. <laughs> um, but if you listen close, with my mic off, I just can't help but respond. The disconception about... Uh... This <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it is? So I push the button and you hear it through... <laughs> Oh, that's you could do that's the talk me back. saying it to the to the talk back. Wow. The misconception about uh, <laughs> that's let's funny. let's say good evening to the very very troubled Dave Rothenberg. I went into a moment where I just I lost my every, you name it I lost it. Okay, and what did you say to him? Can you move your fat ass up to the net, please? <laughs> <laughs> This is a total stranger. He's playing pickleball. Well, and by the way, I mean, was, so was this guy larger than Dave? Dave's Dave's not a, a small man. He's not Twiggy. How dare he? I mean, Michael, that's insane behavior. I'm sure he had his reasons. I support Dave. <laughs> what is going on here? This is not something I ever expected. I don't know the here. man's name, but I support him. Can you believe that was even said? I love wow. Dave. Listen, I do too. I see your mom naked, and I'm like, okay. Here. The man is an absolute psychopath. I mean, you know that. I know that. The people know that. That's so what makes him a great radio host. But I, I may have to go see this man's attempt at playing paper. Will you heckle if you're there? Play <sighs> uh, No, but I am curious. Like, Dave fancies himself to be an athlete. And we saw him play I'm softball. We saw him play softball. Well, that's the thing. He can't throw. <laughs> And that competition that you had at the uh, Beach Bash years ago, remember when we lifted you off the ground? Yeah, I got smashed in the face. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was, was a pillow fight. I mean, they, they, you won that easily. That the I beat him in the competitions. I believe were there was basketball, mm -hmm. shooting. It was it was basketball. It was throwing a football, right? Was well, it? that's I beat him that day. Was th throwing the football through a target. Then we did receiving the football. And then there was a basketball game at uh, Michael's, Michael's barbecue. House. Yeah, you humiliated him at every turn. <laughs> Did I lose any? No. I like I, the twenty-seven I, Yankees when you play against. Them. I, I know I beat him in the in the throwing and catching. Hmm. Now this is not appropriate to say, especially given the conversation of the show it's we've Thursday. had today. But I was referring to we were talking about women's sports. Uh, and sexism came up, and so this shouldn't be mentioned. But you know what? It's an indication of where things were as hmm. a society. But remember, it was Saturday Night Live. Do you remember the classic and now? Deeply offensive sketch, the, the the run, throw, and catch like a girl Olympics. Oh, right. <laughs> with John Belushi? Yeah. So I, I'm the, the wording that they use to describe that is inappropriate. But if you were to go back and watch what the athleticism looked like, it's a Dave simulation. Why, why are you picking on Dave? Why are you starting to fight with Dave? He, listen, he's got the form. Those were huge, fat people. I mean, this is, well, first of all, what are you worried about? Because this man's attacking people in the street like a maniac. Yeah, these are total strangers, Michael. He, 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 I mean, he cursed he cursed and taunted a, a, a stranger, Michael. 
What if the guy just decided to take his pickleball racket, smash him in the face? Well, I mean, How would you that's, feel then? that's the risk he's taking. Remember when Dave was a young man, he smashed his tennis racket over a competitor's head. Well, never, never forget. No, that was the net, not their head. No, I thought no, he hit the guy. No, I think he hit the guy, Peter. No, he couldn't. Yes. Yeah, then, then, yeah. then, he was then are suspended. We sure, are we sure as a station we even want to do this event? Should this be called off? Well, for, first of all, he's going to be torn. Amani Tumor is a giant. He's not going to hit. Great point. He's not going to hit Literally. Amani. And, and if he and hit a, uh, Anita, Anita could kick his butt. Yeah, I was going to say, if there's a fight, the Dave's dead. Well, I so, smashed the gotcha. treadmill through the blind through the window. So he would lose a fight to everybody participating in that, including whoever the radio engineer is. <laughs> That's not nice. Um, all right. Johnny Damon was a mangy mess. Why? With the, Why with do we have to go to that? Mangy? A well, mangy mess. Well, mangy, whatever it is. Why does that get played? I just, I missed it. I just missed yeah. it. You're going to miss something. Your teeth. Oh, by the way, uh, go to my Twitter. I, I retweeted um, the Game Misconduct Bracket Challenge for the NHL playoffs. Participate. Ooh, that sounds fun. Because the winner, I'm going to buy an authentic jersey of their liking. For whoever wins, out of my own pocket. You want to see the matter? I'm buying listeners. I like what you're doing. So if you're a Canuck fan and you just uh, you want a uh, a Quinn Hughes jersey, bang! A little 43 action, a little Huggis in the back. Can you get Huggis? I could do it. He could do it all. You know what I mean? Because I want people to have fun. You got, you got to play for something, right? You got to sit there and go, join the bracket challenge and show off to your friends that you know more. No. Authentic jersey. Bang. Sent to your house. That's like authentic. 300 bucks, right? You bet your ass it is. <laughs> Why is everybody cursing? <laughs> you want to see the matter? <laughs> this is cursing? Those hey, words hey, are curse words. Hey, the H, is H really a curse? Yes. C it's the definition of curse adjacent. It's you can say it on television, you can say it on radio, you can say it everywhere. It's it's got to well, be curse adjacent. Yeah, hopefully Mushnick's not listening. Oh, by oh, the way, we have to wait for Mushnick to call him. Oh, tonight. Yeah, is it tonight? I may, you know what? How do you I, even know that? I may be counting down tonight. I may. I'm just gonna sit there refreshing the page, <laughs> like, you're, like you're trying, like you're trying to wait for tickets to go on sale. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep <laughs> waiting. Where's Mushnick? Where's Mushnick? I gotta see. So let's get you. You think he's gonna hammer him? I think he is. So the conversation earlier in the week, in case you missed it, was that the our beloved John Sterling has called it a career. And as many of you may or may not know, most of you may not know, because who reads Phil Mushnick these days? I do. But uh, that's just to see if he rips you. But he has always hammered John Sterling. Not a fan, doesn't appreciate him, essentially thinks Sterling is a hack. So now that John Sterling is ending his illustrious career, the question is, will Mushnick have the cojones, the gall, unmitigated, some mm -hmm. would say, to go after Sterling in his column tonight slash tomorrow? Or is he a gutless puke and tries to clean it up as the legend goes off into that good night? He won't. He, uh, he's not a gutless puke. He's, he's quite the opposite. And I think he will double down. But that can't make you feel good either. This is lose-lose for you, Mike. What do you mean? Be well, if he doubles down, it's going to upset you to see on his way out the door Sterling getting attacked in your former beloved newspaper. And if he's and if he doesn't do it, then you have to be disgusted that he uh, he he was so weak. I, I don't I don't I don't doubt for a second that it will be will, will be a prominent part of the column. It's going to be bashing. So here's my... Oh, what about this? And you know what? what? He, I, I, I won't feel bad because John's going to get a huge ovation on Saturday and showered with love and affection. So he, he it won't wins. Matter, is what you're saying. He wins. Now, now Don, here's, this, here's my thought, though. I could see Phil hedging. No, he's not a hedger. I could see him, though, hedging in this, where he, he, he talks about how long his career has been and, and finds something nice to say no, and, and no. then follows it up by killing him. Have you ever read him? He's not. He's not that way. He, he's going he's gonna to triple down. Like celebrating. No, he's, he's going to repeat what he's always said. He's going to talk nope. about he didn't tell you where pitches were. He, he never gave the score. Uh, it was all about him. Uh, if you want to read a great column, Peter, I know you don't like to read, but go to SI.com. I've said that. Mm -hmm. And Tom Verducci. The great. He is great. I think he's one of America's great sports writers. Uh, he writes a column, an appreciation of John Sterling, and talk about pitch perfect. He gets it. 
how John is beloved. Read everybody. Go there. Go to SI.com and read Tom Verducci's column. It is a love letter to John Sterling. And that will not be the case later tonight. You don't expect that. I don't know if it'll be harsh, but I think it'll be on brand. Let's well, you, hear you from... You promised a public reading tomorrow on the show, Peter. Oh, I'm doing it. Right. No matter what it is, we will be reading it. This is going to be... Get the get the uh, books ready, because the ratings are going to go through the roof. You think nobody reads Phil Mushnick's column. Wait till you hear someone reads it on the air, Don. You'll hear <laughs> you'll hear the collective radios go silent. But damn it, I'm going through with it. It's like, like cleansing the system. <laughs> let's go. Now, let's now hear Phil, f- I am not saying that no one reads no. your column. You, you know, Peter stop. is... You're a gutless man. I am. Right? I'm, I admit I'm a gutless what do you? Dude. Here's my question, though. What are you scared of? He's ripped you a thousand times. Does it matter if it's a thousand and yeah, one? It doesn't matter. It hurts every time. Really? Yes. <laughs> you know what, though? The disconception about uh, Alex Feltzbrock. Let's hear from OG Anunobi. The Knicks' secret weapon, waxing poetic on Jalen Brunson's fantastic season. I mean, I've always known Jalen was really good. In high school, was really good. In college, it was with the Mavericks, was really good. So it's really not a surprise. He's always been really good. It's just, I guess, uh, just up in the volume, I guess, for him. But yeah, he's always been a great player, so none of it's a surprise to me. Uh, OG Anunobi also very excited to play his first playoff game as a New York Knickerbocker. Oh, excited. You know, I've heard everyone tells me about how crazy it's going to be. And I used to watch um, their games, like, uh, growing up. And then even the last couple of years, been watching their home games. So it's been crazy. So it'll be, it'll be pretty cool to experience it firsthand. I'm very excited to see what this basketball team does. Now, how much do you think, Michael, the air will get sucked out of the building if they have a rough outing in game one. Well, that's how fans are. Of course we get sucked out of the building. And then we'll have to do therapy on Monday. But like, yeah, you have to be... It's such an interesting matchup. Because you really do not know who this Sixer team is. The, I, can I tell you guys the truth? It's considering the Knicks had a good year. Obviously, if they were talking about ending up in the eight seed, I'd have a different conversation. But considering they were going to be a top three seed... This was the worst case scenario, in my opinion, and I'm and I don't doubt them. I think they will win this series. I think the Heat I, with I, Jimmy Butler was the worst scenario. And I hear you; it's a fair argument, Michael. But Jimmy Butler is out. Yep. Embiid is at least playing. If Embiid is a hundred percent, and 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 you can't tell if he was last night. By the way, that was a pretty thrilling playing game to, till you know till pretty late. Yeah. But if Embiid is 100%, he's, he's one of the most intimidating players to have to deal with in this league. You almost have to say, Michael, just assume he's going to get his 40 points. Yeah, I mean, and then you stop everybody else. And then you, and then you worry about Maxi, you worry about everyone else, and you let Embiid do what he does. It's like what Connecticut did with Edie. Let Edie get his points. You know, you could try to use your 20 fouls on, on Embiid, but the difference the thing makes Embiid, the reason I love him, Michael, throw all the fouls you want at Embiid, he shoots 88% from the line. Right. So you can fa- he, he, Hart- he, he's, he's a foul seeker. He loves it. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Well, let's hear from Isaiah Hartenstein on how the Knicks will deal with the Embiid situation. Um, I mean, it's a mixture of things. Um, keeping your hands back. Um, no one at the end of the day is an MVP, so he's going to get some calls that maybe don't go in your favor. But at the end of the day, it's really just doing your job, playing team defense, and again, trying to keep, don't really put your hands in because he's going to try to try to get it in him. But also, it's smart from him. I mean, why not use it? I mean, I'm not saying it's it's bad. Um, if he's smart enough to do it, and we keep doing it, then that's kind of on us. Isaiah taking on the personality of the head coach in this specific situation. I don't like him. I could, I could. That I'm not going to say that. If anybody notices, by the way, Sleepy Tom Bobo is my has gone away. I was told at some point that I shouldn't maybe do Sleepy Tom Bobo. Oh, really? Time. Yeah, I stopped You're taking a side. I wasn't taking a side, but I was told maybe not. Hmm. Although in retrospect, I got new, guys. Question for you. We have any big uh, Knicks guests coming on leading up to the playoffs? Mike Breen tomorrow at five. Was that and 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 Mike Breen? We know him though, well, right? We what? We know him pretty well, though. Yeah. Don't we? Feel like we could get him whenever we ask him because he's your best friend. Well, the Knicks don't provide anybody. 
That's I, that. That was where I was going. I said, "What do we worry about before or after the uh, Sleepy Tom Bobo?" That's what, I think that's that was what I'm saying. Point. Whether it was before Sleepy right. Tom, after Sleepy Tom, we don't get Tom, we don't get Bobo, we don't get anybody. Right. So what are we worried about? You know, Noah didn't reprimand his wife if she spilled water over the ark, saying you're just adding to this flood. <laughs> you're unbelievable. <laughs> and he said so it was such a, such a <laughs> methodical, you're just adding to this flood, honey. <laughs> yeah. You're making matters worse now. Oh, yeah, and by the way, don't even get me started on, the. oh, oh no, the dog pooped over there. Well, guess what? We have two elephants. We got two giraffes. We got two... There, what, you, that or you ark was a mess. Yeah, you can't worry about the dog pooping when you've got elephant dung to clean up. Can you up. imagine you know what the I mean? stink on that ark? Oh my god, it was it was a nightmare situation. But it was a beautiful thing for them to do. Yeah, people people were complaining about Firefest a couple years ago. Imagine being stuck on Noah's ark. You guys want to hear from Caitlin Clark? Sure. From Noah's ark to Caitlin Clark. Rhymes. I Asked a strange question at her fever presser. Caitlin, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, I'll let me do this. You like that? I like that you're here. Uh, I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, well, let's cool. start doing it to me and we'll be able to get along just fine. Cornball. I know what he was trying to do, Oof. and boy, did it play yeah, bad. It he apologized. He apologized? Yes, he did. For just being. <laughs> Someone should have played him out. So he was trying to just say, as a guy who's covering the fever, like, this is so cool and exciting that you're here, I right. assume, right? I guess. Right, and it came out very clunky, and yeah, he's got to be embarrassed. He comes off looking terrible. The cornball. And it's moving around everywhere. You know, I, mean, these... I mean, do you get a sense he's hitting on her? That's how it, I know that can't, I mean, listen, I can't, I don't know the man from Adam. Or Noah, for that matter. But I can't imagine that's what he's doing. I have to imagine it's... oh, Because let's be real. Your beat, one of your beats, let's say, and I don't know, maybe they just got this beat and he's already a big-time reporter, he in which is. case he's it's weird. He's been there forever. So he's done he's other big things. yeah. So he covers the Pacers. Yes. But, he, but even still, maybe, I'm maybe sure it's been... i a... uh, Peyton Manning. Well, then, it, then it gets weird. Andrew Luck. Yeah, Andrew Luck. Yeah, that's a weird one. So if he's covered all, it's not like, thank you for finally giving me something to cover. Right. You've covered Super Bowls. You've covered... Well, and he's a big columnist. He's covering Tyrese Halliburton. Like, there's God. a lot. There's things going on there. It's. It, I think it's a case of trying to be a little too cool. It, <sighs> and if he's trying to hit on her, he's got no game. It's It's really... It's awk. Caitlin, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, I'll let me do this. You like that? <laughs> I, I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, wait, wait. Start to me and we'll get along just fine. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, you guys, we haven't uh, talked a lot about Joe Shane talking. Mm. Um, Joe Shane of uh, your New York football giants asked, are teams at the top of the draft willing to trade, perhaps? Yeah, it's hard to say. And then, two being in the division, that's a difficult one. You know, typically, if you know, you're talking in the top ten of the draft, trading with somebody within the division. So, otherwise, I, I don't think anybody's ready to move right now. I know you know people are listening, which we, we'll all do that from you know teams behind us or or moving up. I think those exploratory talks and conversations will happen here shortly. You know, we just finished up 30 visits, and as you're well aware, some other teams still had some large groups, small groups, whatever it may be. So you're still gathering information. We can still have zooms with players players for you know up until Wednesday so you know I, I think teams are still getting to know some of these prospects or any loose ends that they need to, to tie up before the draft so I think you know again those conversations will happen over the next I would say you know 48 to 72 hours those will start happening you'll get a feel for you know who's open to from and, the people and, I talk to they're either going to stay at six trade up to four trade down later in the first round take a quarterback possibly not uh, let's. Uh, that, oh, that's Michael. This is very exciting. Tell we're me. being joined. We're being joined by Marco Lavero. <laughs> Marco, uh, that's about the Giants. Anything you can tell us about what the Jets are thinking? Jets are thinking possibly offensive line, maybe a receiver, maybe trading up or down. <laughs> well, I got to ask then, Marco, because we don't get a lot of draft experts on the show. 
My Washington Commanders picking two overall. What do you sense? I think it's an absolute lock. They will make a selection. <laughs> And, and finally, the New England Patriots may be looking for a quarterback. I think they're going to try to rebuild, but then possibly take a quarterback, maybe free agency, maybe be late with the pick and select four. <laughs> That'll do it for Marco Levera and ENN, brought to you by Security Dodge. Shop 24-7 at securitydodge.com during their Dodge Power Shot Days Jeep Celebration event and Ram Truck Month. Michael didn't see him amused by it, Don, but I enjoyed it. I loved it. it. I loved it. Because the point is, for people who may not get the joke, because not everyone's <laughs> sharp, is that all of the draft <laughs> conversation is nothing. It's literally bumbling nothing. Like, from the biggest expert to the absolute biggest jabroni, it's all just like this. I've heard that every quarterback's going to Washington. I've heard that every quarterback could go to it's the... It's bumpkins. everywhere. It's buckus, Michael. You hear I us? I hear you. And also, My you're going to hear is... you're going to hear Henrik Lundqvist tomorrow, four forty-five. Mike else? Green at five. We're going to bring you into the better. weekend. It's going to be great. Uh, Peter's got something to tell you. Then Dan Gross after that.